Hello everyone, what is the value of x in this interesting equation? 1 to the power x is equal to negative 1. If we are saying this statement is false, I agree with you because Wolfram Alpha is saying the exact same thing. The reason is simple. 1 to the power x over here can never be negative. It is positive. But on the right hand side we have negative answers which makes the statement false. But the truth of the matter is that it is not false when you are considering complex answers. So let's cast our mind on the complex equation. That is, z is equal to a plus bi, where a and b are the real part, then i is the complex part. On the Cartesian plane, we can represent this quickly. Always on the horizontal axis, we have the real part, then on the vertical axis, we have the imaginary part. Now let's say we have this point over here, let's call it Z. Then this point from the origin to this point, let's call it A. Then this point from the origin to this point, let's call it B. Now if we trace it just like this up to point Z and then we trace it all the way to this point, the distance from the origin to point Z is the magnitude of Z. Some people call it R by the way. Now, from Pythagoras' theorem, you can get z to be equal to square root of a squared, sorry, a squared plus b squared. Now, let's transpose this idea into polar coordinate, where we have z to be equal to r times cos theta plus i times sine theta. Now let's pay attention to what is in the parentheses over here. This is the same as Euler's equation, which is given by e to the power i theta is equal to what we have in the parentheses already, plus i sine theta. And this implies that we're going to get z to be equal to r e to the power i theta. Now what is r over here? From the question, r is going to be 1 squared, which is 1, and it is the same as negative 1 squared, which is still 1. So it implies that r is equal to 1. Now the question is 1 to the power x is equal to negative 1. If we represent this on a graph, we're going to have the graph here. If you are considering unit circle, then we're going to get this point to be 1. Then here, this point is going to be negative 1. At this point over here, we have theta to be equal to 0 degrees. In radian, it is still 0. But the truth is that we can rotate this one. Then we will get theta to be equal to 2 pi. We can still rotate again. In that order so we can get so many angles for theta so to get the general angle for theta we're gonna write theta to be equal to 0 plus 2n pi where n is an integer now if we substitute this one into Euler's equation over here we're gonna get the right hand side to be 1 then the left hand side we're gonna get e to the power what is there right so in all, we're going to be getting 1 is equal to e to the power 2n pi i. So we'll come to this one later. Let me call it equation star. Now let's consider what the value of theta will be when we are dealing with negative 1 here. For this one, we will rotate all the way from this point up to this point. And with this, theta is going to be pi. And we can continue the rotation just like that. And you see that we have so many angles for theta. Therefore, let's write the general angle for theta. With this one, we just have to add 2n. In the, now, shouldn't be n. Let's change the variable. Let's call it 2k pi. Because it's not necessary that this k will be equal to this n, right? Now, note that k is also an integer. So in this case, if we put this one into Euler's equation over here, then we're going to be getting 
negative 1 to be equal to e to the power i times pi plus 2k pi. And let's call this one equation hash. Now let's go ahead and then replace equation hash and star into the main equation here. Wherever we see 1, we're going to put equation star. And wherever we see negative 1, we're going to put equation hash. So we're going to have e to the power 2n pi i all to the power x is equal to e to the power. Now here we see that we have pi pi, so we can factor it out. In the parentheses, we will have 2k plus 1, then pi times i. From indices, we can multiply this one by this straight away. So we're going to have e to the power 2n x pi i is equal to e to the power 2k plus 1 times pi i. We see that the bases are the same, so straight away we can equate their powers. So we're going to have 2nx pi i is equal to 2k plus 1 times pi i. Straight away, this and this one will go when we divide through by pi i. And we are left with 2nx is equal to 2k plus 1. Let's go ahead and divide through by 2n. So that this and this will go. We are left with x, which is equal to 2k plus 1 divided by 2n. Now note that n and k are all integers. Now what do we see over here? We see that the numerator over here is an odd number, then the denominator is even. So this is the answer for x. Now let's go ahead and then choose any number for k and n, but you see that since n is a denominator here, we don't want n to be equal to 0. So from here, we have to just assume that k is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1. Now let's figure out what x will be when k is 0 and n is equal to 1. So we will have 2 times 0, which is still 0, plus 1 divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. So this is what we have for x. Let's go ahead and then test and see whether we will get negative 1. We have 1 to the power x, which is half in this case, is equal to negative 1. Remember, we are in the complex world. Now, complex square root of 1, we're going to get two answers. We're going to have 1 and negative 1. So in this case, this is the final answer to the problem over here. I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thanks for watching and see you again on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.